Hey guys, welcome back to another episode here on the Hermie with your goat team. I don't know, man. Sometimes when I do the intro for the Hermitcraft episodes, uh, I just feel like, uh, you know, it's such a cute server. Cute little Hermy. <laughs> How you doing, guys? How you doing? I hope you had a great week. Look at me. I look shiny. Fully decked out. And, um, yeah, the reason for that being is... Uh, <laughs> unfortunate incidents. <laughs> On a live stream recently, we did some tunnel boring. And as you know... The mob switch didn't work properly. This whole experiment with these villagers, that was probably the most obnoxious thing I've ever tried in my history of trying things in Minecraft. Like seriously. The concept is really good for a mob switch that sits in unloaded chunks somewhere and you know, all good. But as soon as you have them around anything and uh, items can fall down and they can pick them up, it's a nightmare. It's a pure nightmare. It never really worked because part of the villagers I transformed had items picked up and didn't count to the mob cab and then I had mobs around everywhere. It was a pure nightmare. And then eventually I fell into a lava hole followed by a creeper that jumped right after me, blew me up and all my stuff burned up. Besides the original pickaxe. So I went ahead, uh, did everything new in and then also was so sick of it that I was still so annoyed by it that I went ahead, you know, looking for, um, what we call it, netherite stuff, where is, I, I, I have it somewhere, uh, here. I have, few, I have a few more left even, three more ingots left. So I went on a little spree looking for netherite, uh, you know, mumbling into my beard, being still mad for hours. <laughs> that gave me the motivation to finally say, okay, I admit defeat, this was a stupid experiment, should have done the right thing right from the get-go. And, well, I corrected my mistakes. But before we look at that uh, real quick, big, big, big mega shout-outs to Belmarzi, maker of inappropriate uh, logos that cannot be used on Hermitcraft. <laughs> But this time, maker of one of the most epic thumbnails I've ever seen. Look at that. <laughs> the goat rocking out. And I love the details on the art piece here. The, yeah, For example, Ben Marzi on the guitar. You know, uh, it's just uh, epic. And I love it because yeah, music um, is pretty much my driving force. So yeah, big, big shout outs to Ben Marzi. All the important links in the video description. This is just sick. Thank you so much, Belmarzi. And yeah, it's funny, I spoke about it on Twitter. I was mentioning, man, one day it will happen. I will, uh, you know, form this epic rock band uh, combining Jono, you know, Renz Bro, and Goat Sauce, and then I'm going to recruit um, X and Impulse. Then we create this uh, crazy metal band and do the biggest banger ever created in banger history. <laughs> and that uh, yeah, led to this amazing art piece. But it's, it's generally um, fitting with me anyways, because yeah, music is a huge motivation for me to do things and a huge inspiration to do things. Um, yeah, every morning before I start work, so to speak, and sit down in my computer, and grind out an, uh, the content for the episodes and whatnot. You know, I motivate myself by listening to epic music. At the moment, I'm listening a lot to Enzi Ferrum, uh, some, uh, you know, Viking-inspired heavy metal. Um, really, really cool. Anyways, um, yeah, talking about music, um, maybe you can leave your favorite bands in the comment section. Would be interesting to hear what you guys are listening to, especially what motivates you, what gets you going, what inspires you. And yeah, what inspires me, <laughs> what inspired me was this super crappy mob switch we tried out here. There's the remains of it, and there's the new thing. So let's take a quick look how this uh, yeah, came to be, all right? All right, so let's go through the process of loading wardens into the tunnel bore choo-choo train together. Ooh, lava. It's loud down here. I have a few, few of those guys down here already. Over there. That is 24, 24, 20. So we got 68 in there already. In theory, we only need two more uh, to make a fully working mob switch, but we're gonna fill in like 10 or 15 more of them, just to be sure in case I miscounted. But it's already looking good. I see no mob spawns around me, which just goes to prove that this thing works. 
but only partially. Because, yeah, probably half of them is not really <laughs> helping preventing mob spawning. Man, this thing. I dislodged it from the tunnel bore. And now we can move the tunnel bore ahead and this thing will just remain back. So, yeah, now we want to fill the fourth wagon of our train. That means, yeah, we need to move over a few blocks. All right, so let's do this. Let's go to the tunnel bore and we can move the whole thing forward. And then we can load in more of the wardens into the system. All right, so let's do that here. I'll aim for that and then we'll look with free cam. Boom, clicked. And we pull the whole thing along. Nice. Boom, tunnel bore fired up ahead. Okay, and yeah, now we need to do a few more blocks forward fire again here just to make sure there's no water or anything in the way all right let's see i think two more increments forward and we should be good let's quickly check on that yeah now we're over here then the yep two more increments so let's go boom Stuff like that, I'm sure it's two more increments, but I'd rather double check because things like that to check one time too little could cost you, I don't know, hours of work if, you'd, if it's the wrong situation. And here it, yeah, probably would not be the end of the world, but it would be a, a tiny bit annoying. <laughs> All right, but I think we, we did it correctly. Now this is in line, yeah. Here the wardens will drop and they will be right in there. Okay, cool. So that's the first step. Bring the tunnel bore in the correct position to the portal that is connected here. And now you might wonder where are yeah, these portals connecting to or where is this portal connecting to. And um, yeah, let's go up to the nether and uh, check that out. A little bit of off-camera mining I did. <laughs> uh... Um, over here. Whoop -doo. All right, let's go to the nether, shall we? Okay, let's close this gate here. All right. So on the nether side of things, we go over there, just beyond Joe's uh, giant map here. I have. Yeah, the arrival side of my warden farm setup. Nice. Let's get these wardens out of here. Those are two left in there. You can look at this system in the meantime. I mean, it's pretty simple. There's a portal here. And wardens will wander out here because they are going for the note blocks. They see the... Uh, yeah powdered snow as a full block, step onto it and just fall down into 24 hopper mi or minecarts that are sitting on the hopper here and we kill them with entity cramming, cramming relatively fast. I do have a switch here though, which allows me yeah, to put wardens into this flying machine and that goes this way then. So yeah, let's first activate the warden farm in case you haven't seen one of those bad boys. It's a pretty cool system which will come in handy uh, with us exploring ancient cities for the last trim as well. We need the silence trim still. And I just got tired of, you know, exploring ancient cities, having the warden spawn on me all the time. So I was just like, yes, yeah, so I really don't like to do anything. Let's make a warden farm. And here it is. So found an ancient city location here. I don't even think I have explored this ancient city. It's somewhere around and um, yeah, in the ancient city, I found one of those Shrieker boys, right? Those dudes, what is this? Yeah. <laughs> and then put one of those next to it, you know, the other Shrieker guy. And it's important, you got to find a natural, uh, naturally generated um, um, <laughs> skulk. No, it's not a catalyst. What is it? Oh, skulk. Yeah. You know the thing that calls in the warden. Anyways, that's what you need. You case it, encase it with wool so it's isolated and you have this piston below that is hooked up to a standard hopper clock here, two sticky piston ones, 
comparator repeater both going in there with a torch that triggers this piston and um, yeah then a simple on and off switch and this goes off to a chunk loading portal um, right here which keeps the farm loaded pretty much that's it um, this is a different uh, chunk loader concept simply shoot an item over and there is a honey wall on the other side which makes the item slide down into these hoppers there back into the dropper um, dispenser combo and you know, here we had 16 items in the hopper clock it's good enough to keep on triggering the warden so 16 items over there can we access it now quickly dig it up 16 right so that's in there and yeah then every time the clock uh, triggers it also sends an item over and on the other side we send the item right back um, I can show you that on the other side so how do we get uh, wardens to spawn well wardens need noise and uh, noise uh, generated by players so we just use arrows and shoot those arrows into the wool block right next to the shrieker thingy so do a few I don't know step away can't use an infinity bow by the way it has to be a proper bow then we tr activate the thing and you can already hear the screaming oh yeah and already a warden spawned so now the warden spawning is active and uh, these wardens belong to us that means uh, only here these wardens can spawn somewhere else um, we are safe to explore ancient cities and yeah the wardens then just simply spawn on top here in these um, portals and then just instantly pretty much up oh, there was another one <laughs> instantly get sent to the nether where we have our other portal in here you know a, a little bit further away so I can easily access it without going through the, the portals where the wardens hang out we have another portal here and um, that will bring us out right in front of the farm running pretty much there it is you can see wardens are spawning literally inside the portal now looks like it climbing up walks forward and just arrives here and here you can see the other side of the chunk loader right it's just these honey blocks the items get spit against go through the hopper chain and get detected as soon as there's an item in there this triggers and sends it back right away so yeah we keep the chunk loading loop going this way so now um, we want to load 10 or so of those guys into our uh, flying machine so we do this one two three four four of them five just open the fence gate there right there And they get kind of pushed by the minecart. Six. Now we're waiting for ten, pretty much. Okay. Walks out there. Sniff, sniff. <laughs> Seven. Eight. If you catch eleven or what, it's also not a problem. And number nine coming out. <laughs> it looks, it always looks cool, you know, at these farms when you can see the wardens <laughs> climbing through the earth. Okay, this is number ten coming. So we wait until this guy's walked over. And now we close the gate again. And now the other wardens just get killed, cannot make it into the flying machine. Okay, so we have this batch now, and now we just sent the flying machine up and running. Receiver station is ready. Okay, and off we go. There goes the warden choo choo train. At the moment they were still hearing the note block, now they hear the pistons firing and going crazy. As you can always see. Whoop, what was that? Malilip config? Okay. If you can always see. Right where the particles are pointing to now, they're mad at the piston pretty much. They'll calm down. There's always one stupid guy that um, 
is mad at the other wardens making noise and blocking them, so I might need to fishing rod them a little bit over here in case they get stuck a little bit. Normally it resolves after a while, but sometimes the uh, warden AI is so stupid, literally hearing each other and then <laughs> one guy bumps into the other dude and just doesn't let him walk. Hey, I hear something there. Step back. <laughs> I think Tango had uh, some issues with that as well last uh, season in Decked Out, right, when the Wardens were just stupid, um, triggering each other. <laughs> so, alright, this guy arrives here now, boom, and the uh, gate is open, they immediately, you can see here, the node block over there, and start wandering over the snow and into the next flying machine. It's a two-way process here because we kind of have to go around the corner. And here it shows again, yeah, most of them are actually hearing the load block and this one guy is just sitting there <laughs> blocking the others in. So there's two ways of getting them to move. One way, which is a bit more annoying because they will eventually hear me and uh, blast me it's from up here. Oh, crap. Yeah, that was already... Wait. They're already mad. Yeah, some of the particles are coming towards me. They're about to shoot any second. Yeah, this guy's mad. <laughs> so this is one way to do it. Try to fishing hook them like that. But I came to the conclusion using arrows is kind of the better way. You kind of the guy that is in front and causing issues and then you start to shoot arrows to, f to further up here to encourage him to walk there sometimes getting a bit closer also works yeah so it's always a bit fiddly with the AI if you have one guy pretty much being in the way Yeah, yeah. today they're extra pesky. Normally if you get one in, the chokehold here gets resolved a bit. Aha, uh -huh. there we go. There we go. <laughs> See this one guy is still holding the back. It's like, now you can go. Stop listening to each other's footsteps. There we go. That's why I always need a fishing rod, man. This guy will also soon come to their senses now. Alright, here we go. See, those guys are literally listening to each other's footsteps. He just went back now. Hello, I'm here. At yeah, this time we got three footstep listeners, that's rare. Looks like three or four. I normally only got like one. And then when that got pulled, when I managed to pull, ah, here we go. Now we're coming. Now we're coming all of a sudden. All right, here we go. <laughs> Finally. Okay, sweet. We got them all in. And we sent them off. At the same time, we can send this flying machine back already. So we don't make a mistake and let wardens out. I just stay in range here a little bit. Like this. Of both flying machines. This one is going back. And this one is going over. Right. Just need to make sure we don't unload. Mainly this one. I mean, if this gets stuck in midair a little bit, but so far it didn't happen. It's always in render distance, so I just kick it here. And things are happening. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. This can keep on running over there doesn't matter. 
Okay. And we stay a bit with the flying machines. And that one docked already. Beautiful. Alright, and now we stick with this one. And here on the other side, again, there can be issues with them getting out of their station because they're hearing their feet for, for some reason instead of the super loud note block. But yeah, we will stand on that scaffolding bit over there and await their arrival. And hopefully be able to fish them out if need be. We should be fine. All right. Here they come. We have this redstone torch below that always opens the fence gate immediately when they arrive. Boom, there it happened. And those guys are marching out. Aha. There's a food food lover in the in the mix again. The, the guy here in the front. Refusing to let the others out. Let's see how this develops. We'll try to pull him right away. Boom. Okay. Yeah. Come over here, give them an incentive, the ones that kind of tracked me. Alright. That went well already. Do another fishing rod. Alright. Good. Last bit. Stop looking at your feet. <laughs> I don't know what. Ooh. Okay, now no, they got mad. Okay. And now there's this one guy. What? Are you looking at your own feet now? Really? There we go. Yeah, I saw. What? Oh, you're a cheeky one, huh? There we go. <laughs> okay. And now we finally got them all in. And now we can go to our tunnel bore and inspect the results of this glorious endeavor. Having a ton of wardens. Ah, oops. Okay. Let's go down here. And now this area should finally be fully spawn proof. Ah, beautiful. Ah, oh, beautiful. I can't believe it. Should have done this right away. But hey, you want to try out something new? Sometimes it's not worth trying out something new. Sometimes you just want to use what works. And the Warden Choo Choo Terrain surely does work. So here you can see it. Ba -ba -ba. We made it all through, through the portal. Here's the same system, right? Snow, noise, boom, they walk out, drop down. And yeah, now we'll have no mobs spawning around us. And um, we can work with the tunnel bore like an absolute boss. Hi, ah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't be like quite over there. <laughs> oh, oh, be mad. Bam. <laughs> uh, they're taking them out. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, over there is still the shoot where the wands came down and yeah, it's just a given man. Also, 
I'm still looking for that last uh, armor trim and it is one of those, you know, 1.2% chances in ancient cities and I'm just sick and tired of looking everywhere, um, you know, and having the warden spawn on me all the time. So with the warden farm, I can disable warden spawning in the ancient cities and we will hopefully later explore a, a few or maybe hopefully only one and find that last armor trim because that's part of our shop. Um, you might say, what dog, it's still not working, you got mobs here. Well, we just were all the way back there, out of range of the yeah, warden choo-choo train and therefore mobs could spawn. But when we operate a tunnel bore, it's perfectly safe now and it's the best thing ever. I could really make fast progress, like just yesterday when I was done installing the new mob switch. And then look how far we moved already, just me being happy. <laughs> trying it out right um, all the way back there is our glass shoot and we pulled all the way to here the most satisfying thing was when the warden started to obliterate the stupid zombie villagers oh, i was like yes hit them harder <laughs> but yeah now no mobs inside you know anywhere clear uh, yeah anywhere near us and we can operate the tunnel bore in peace ah. and yeah that's working of course very good um, now we managed to acquire quite a bunch of uh, emerald ore already that's my resources at the moment my building blocks and uh, that means from now on we can start actually putting our redstone creations onto the proper blocks and that kind of marks out a new era here now we advanced to actually being able to build with diamond blocks for the storage system i might need a little bit more still but um, yeah we're getting there we're getting there so that is really really cool Really, really cool to see. So yeah, um, you can believe me now, I have, <laughs> you know, empiric data. If you want to do a mob switch and pull it along with your tunnel bore, that's the way to go. For the viewers that watch regularly, they know the setup already. It's pretty much the exact same thing, right? We pull them along on the honey block choo-choo train and they're very loud. And it just hooked up to the tunnel bore here. A little bit of a distance um, because of their noise you know they're so loud but when you operate in the front of the tunnel bore you're far enough away to not be bothered by their constant noises so yeah most of the mobs despawned and as long as we are here you can see far in the distance right this is the last creeper that was still loaded from before and didn't despawn yet let's snipe it oh come on yeah there we go and yeah, now as long as we're close to those guys, nothing will spawn around us, which is really, really cool. You can check as well a 3B. Let's activate the hitboxes so we can see mobs better. Let's look around us in the caves, right? Most of the ca those caves are dark. They're not lit up and there's literally nothing. And that's lovely to see. Yes, indeed. So yeah, things are looking bright now. This made me really happy. Um, and yeah, after I had experience, see, now your mobs can spawn again because we got out of reach of our mob switch and they instantly spawn in because it's really dark in here. You can't tell because I'm night visioning the place up. <laughs> but yeah, you can see out here instant mob spawning. So that nice demonstration of the mob effect. Don't worry, this will, or mob switch effect, this will of course not affect other hermits, right? Everybody has an individual mob cap. That means all the other hermit uh, farms they've got going or whatever will run um, without it, uh, out any problems. If we'd want to disable mob spawning globally, would probably be a, a good idea to use some of the uh, villagers again, you know, and stick them into a, a, a far away chunk and then you can activate it or um, deactivate it if need be and then you'd put a thousand of those villagers there or something um, to cover the whole mob cap of the whole server. But that's not necessary for us here. Talking about lots of things, uh, lots of villagers um, needed, but we also have like a ton of oak log now. All these shulker boxes are filled. There's even more, uh, you know, backlogging here in the um, hoppers. But we've got um, uh, wood galore. I mean, it's a full large chest with 27 um, that each contain over 1700 items. So, you know... We're getting there and I'm planning to keep on filling that up and also when it comes to bone meal we are stocking. Thing ran flawlessly, not a single issue with the farm set up. Now um, I had uh, it run chunk loaded, was locked off the server, somewhere else on the server. No problem, runs just fine. 
And yeah, now as the wood production is up and running, um, we must uh, proceed with the shop. And um, I want to work on that today as well a little bit. Got a few shulker boxes with me, heading over to the shopping district. And um, yeah, it's time for some branding. <laughs> over here in the shopping district, the Giga Beaconator has landed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, things are popping out of the ground here. It's cool. You can slowly see the evolution of the shopping district here, right? We had pop-up stall shops super early, like this thing here by Joe. I think this was one of the very first shops. And then slowly but surely the builds are getting bigger <laughs> and better. And over here, for example, B-Dubs uh, made one of his yeah art pieces. Uh, one has to say, oh, what's this? Oh, okay. Every dresser goes toward a big launch. Thank you. What do you buy here? Discount, bulks, premium. Ooh, okay. <laughs> nice, nice. It's Cubs Rocket Shop. Oh, that's a cool way how he did that. Dispensers and displaying it. Yeah, Cub made this cool rocket factory, which is also really, really cool. All right. Neat, neat. Okay, the pro is this like symbolizing that the profits are sucked up and stored in there? Ah, so everybody sees the proc progress for the big fireworks. Probably wants to use the diamonds to create some insane fireworks. That's cool. Yeah, I like it when shops have a bit of lore, you know, like filling them with sand or other things. <laughs> yeah, this is Beatups is art piece here. Yeah, this guy, man, look at this. I mean, wow, right? The details. The slide, you know, this looks like some some banners hanging down there, and it's slightly twisted. And then it has the the what is this? What does it even say? Can't even bamboo. Ah, yeah, bamboo. <laughs> it's like a mosaic. Cool how he did that with the signs. Bamboo, yeah, it's bamboo, and he uh, is offering string. And I saw in his video, uh, you know, he's also kind of. <laughs> quote-unquote offering scaffolding without a license in a way. Not really, you know, just uh, hinting you could craft, you know, scaffolding out of the stuff I sell here. <coughs> really well done. And it's just one of these art pieces Beatups creates. It's just, yeah, sick, sick, sick. Love it. And then, of course, on the other hand, Ren with his really clean and super uh, lore-heavy Gigacorp um, things. I mean, um, yeah, absolutely lovely. Really, really cool. And yeah, here he sells beacons for a reasonable price of two diamond blocks each, which is really reasonable, I have to say. Only downside is at the moment there's no way to get up in the shop if you don't have an elytra. <laughs> Slight oversight. And then I also saw Keralis opening up a bee shop and you know, quite convenient how his base is located here. Pretty much right to next to the, where the shopping district uh, seems to be evolving, right? And Karais was like, yeah, cool. <laughs> Put my bee shop right here. And um, I just saw it in the video. And that's maybe also some question you viewers often ask, how, like, do hermits watch other hermits' videos, actually? I do. Um, definitely, I watch most of the other hermits. Um, sometimes I skim through. But yeah, I'll, I'll try to keep track of what's going on on the server. So cool. Yeah, he has this little area here where the bees can free roam. And this here will be um, the shopping area. A little counter here to sell stuff. All right. But I don't think the shop is stocked yet. If I'm not mistaken. Ooh, who do we got down there? Oh, it's XB. I think he's maybe working on some redstone for his shop here. I think this was all the foods. Yeah. And I like it a lot. This looks like some supermarket, right? Uh, with some stalls outside and then inside there will be all the food. And I saw those. Those are cool, those shopping carts. <laughs> and yeah, here all the food items kind of laid out. So also a work in progress here still, but it's getting there. Oh, I just went into the exit. That's n never good. I hate it when people do that. <laughs> Go in the wrong entrance. So yeah. Things are really coming along. Really lovely. Uh, for us here, 
of our wood job, obviously, first we need the branding now. Um, so I wanted to work on a, a nice uh, shop sign here now as the first project. And then I'm also thinking, you know, as we have some other licenses, um, we might want to extend uh, to the left and to the right here somewhere and add more of our shops, for example, the armor trims and so on. Thinking about um, design ideas for that at the moment um, but yeah for now i'd say it's time for a little bit of shop branding and i was thinking we need some giant sign here on the side so yeah got some resources with me already and um yeah <laughs> chopping some more wood uh, man i need to i need to really start building that universal tree farm i i wanted to build for this whole time but yeah these are the materials for our sign and then um, yeah let's go let's hammer it out Ooh! -hoo. <laughs> what, well, what's the woohoo about? <laughs> Who do we got here? The artist. It, it's me, the shulker guy. Yeah, I know. And and yeah, and the the artist guy. Yeah, really great. <laughs> I love it. I love it. You, you guys do, just do you really? Su yeah, such a great shop. It's so amazing. I'm glad okay. that I share this shop with you. I'm working on uh, a shopping floor. Okay. <laughs> By the way. Uh, oh, nice. Finally, it's about yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we got to hurry up. Uh, it's got to be down there. I have all the basic stuff laid out. Hopefully, I'll get to it today. Then I can did assign you, uh, you uh, did your spot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, fantastic. Did you decide on a name for the shop? Because because I think yeah. this is a great name right here. It really makes a lot of sense. The Big Wood Salmon. Mm, yeah, yeah. Because because mm. the salmon there is made of wood. Yeah. <laughs> right? It's a big wood. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh you sound so happy about it. yeah it's amazing <laughs> yeah yeah I'm, I'm, I'm actually just putting out a, a, a sign right there i'm i'm okay in the middle of it oh wow actually i'm time lapsing uh, our conversation right now this is a big is sign <laughs> yeah a big, big shop big salmon big sign you know big wood nice okay All okay big. i like it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i'm excited to make some more diamonds look at this dog yeah I know, I seen. Oh man, and people were praising you. They were like, "Oh, so cheap, one diamond per Schalke box." And I was like, "What? This is fleecing." D they oh. thought one diamond was cheap. Well, I put it up to two diamonds now, and maybe, maybe I'll raise oh it some God. more because I just came over here and I'm having to restock once again because of all the diamonds I just made. I currently have two stacks and a little bit of diamonds on me right now. Wow. Yeah, brutal. I know it's amazing. It's brutal. Now, for me, it's not. <laughs> I know. <laughs> People were giving you props. I couldn't believe it. They were like, what? Schalke books are so cheap now. It's like, what? Cheap? Super cheap. Are you super kidding? cheap. <laughs> super cheap. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's going to be a, a good money maker, man. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Hmm. I'm excited about will it. Will you keep that shop here or will you do, put it somewhere else? Uh, I'll probably build it somewhere else. It's a really mm. small area here, and I don't want to yeah. cover anybody else's shop. But this is just for... Uh, to get it to get it out there, get the people buying the shulkers, because I know everybody's been begging for the shulkers, so. Mm, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll try if I can get the, uh, uh, you know, how do you call it, shopping space or store space ready now. I mean, you guys can design your own room then or whatever, right? I just okay. prepare the space and then uh, everybody got the same space, no fishy business, all good. You okay, know. no fishy business. I see what uh, you did there. <laughs> 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 yeah okay so, that's awesome i'm looking forward to it yeah. i gotta start mining or uh not mining chopping the crimson stem and the warped wood yeah not yeah. the most fun job no i'm looking yeah i got the oak wood covered now but for the rest i still need to build farms too man it's like mm -hmm. and i had to yep. chop a lot of wood for the rest i'm gonna build here i'm so done with wood chopping man like, <laughs> <laughs> you've chopped enough wood i hate already the build, having the wood the license sale. I hate it, man. I hate it. Uh, it's like, <laughs> well, if you ever want to get rid of it. No, no. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> we can work something out. No, not happening, man. Okay. Never. All right. Before I, I don't know, I watch crazy, crazy documentaries for days before I give that up. I tell you, man. <laughs> no, not after all this work with this hourglass aquarium. Check out some more back lines and stuff. Yeah, yeah. No, no. <laughs> Say, no. Dude. <laughs> I was so sleep deprived. I cannot even. Uh. Yeah, I Anyways. believe you. <laughs> you better. <laughs> oh, there she is! I killed her villagers. <laughs> but I'm I not, heard. I I'm heard not you killed petty. her villagers. I'm not petty at all. <laughs> <laughs> she spent hours getting them over there, and then all of a sudden they're all dead. 
<laughs> I don't care. I spent more time breeding them all. You know. That's true. Yep. You put in the work first. They were your villagers. If I can't have him, they better be dead. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna. But, yeah. That's uh, uh, not petty. Uh, no, not all right. at all. So yeah, I'll I'll get back to making making the sign. Uh, you'll okay. love it. Don't worry. I'm sure I will. I mean, the build itself is magnificent already. Yeah. One thing's for sure, we by far are the biggest build in the whole shopping district, and I guess it's oh, going to yeah. stay like that for a while. I think so. I don't think anybody's <laughs> going to try to tackle the giant hourglass. No. Oh, there she is. She's watching us. Is she? Mm. Oh. Can't be trusted. Just saying. I mean, I, 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 I can trust her. <laughs> I don't think you can, but I can trust her. <laughs> All right, I'll I'll be back. <laughs> See you <All> later. Right. <laughs> later. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Big wood, baby. Ah, oh, yeah, that is looking nice. Very good. I like the rustic style of it. You know, it gives it gives the vibe of some carpenter shop that is going on here, like some board. Um, is a uh, cut up and hung up there and then uh, we put the uh, yeah, the text on there right a little bit of trimming on top and below and here we got a nice branch coming out from the ancient hourglass and yeah here we hung up the big logo <laughs> the big logo everything is big around that shop man Hopefully big profits too, man. Huh? Beef is raking it in with the Schalke boxes. I couldn't believe it. People <laughs> saying, oh, it's so cheap. And it's like, what in the world? People don't understand how easy you produce Schalke bo Schalkers, I guess, when you <laughs> when you have a Schalke farm. It's like, you know, you run it for a half a day and normally the output of all these Schalke farms is so good. You don't have to worry about it anymore. But I guess... Um, people are willing to pay. <laughs> oh, man. <sighs> Money means power, you know. Big Salmon is getting more powerful. I don't know. Hopefully, we can kind of, yes, I don't know, navigate our way through this jungle of complications when these guys will be around. You know, our like deciding factor is the hand puppet Joe. Literally, he's a hand puppet in case you haven't realized with his skin he moves his head up and down so it looks like he's opening his mouth <laughs> so every time i talk to him he's a puppet but um, hopefully <laughs> that's not going to be the case and he becomes a puppet for the big salmon i'm slightly concerned um although it looks like joe is in good spirit here you know he's doing his huge terraforming endeavor out there um, where his main project is he says he has so much dirt so yeah just bring it here i mean you know put it in the hole there's a chest there i didn't expect he would put individual shalka boxes <laughs> growing down into the hole but it's all right we're gonna need some dirt if you want to do some terraforming here around the shop Right, we got to blend it in a little bit and then start working on the yeah, shopping space below. Figured out some good redstone, I think, for the payment system. Um, as we know with everybody, we have a deal to split our income kind of 50 50, uh, aka the sand we'll earn. So we gotta have a payment system that takes care of that automatically. So all our shareholders and stockholders in the shop can easily access their profits um, if they want them. But yeah. That's a nice sign, and I think totally um, all the, you know, logos and banners we need around this shop. <laughs> Big wood with a little bit of fish in it. Anyways, we got our sign up and running, all right? That looks really cool, nice and visible from all sides. Yes, indeed, I love it. Readable from both sides. Nice, happy carpenter vibes. And yeah, did some terraforming around the place. Right, blended it in a bit. It looks pretty decent now. But yeah, we might have additional shops around here for our other goods. So and then the street network is coming, so I don't want to do too much terraforming in case it will interfere with what we got going on um later. But yeah, that blended everything in nicely back here. We made a little cliffside and yeah, I think that flows flows really well. 
And yeah, started to lay out the insides, which is kind of the most important thing of a shop, you would say. <laughs> we spent so much time decorating the outside yet. And yeah, the inside is coming together. I'm looking for a warm and cozy carpenter shop vibe in here. And I think with an intricate floor design, um, I think that's already happening here. A bit of a lower area, uh, lowered area here below. There will be way more details here in the end. But I think that gives a good wipe. And here you can see the basic layout of the shops here. Kind of, you can already tell from the wood patterns uh, what goes where. So here obviously will be the jungle and the spruce wood area, or better say, a dark oak wood. And um, over here, spruce wood and jungle, the other license, right? We will have that area here. Here will be the payment system. This is Beef's um, shop area. I'll only do the floor and basic layout shape of the room so they know what's up. And um, yeah, over here, this is Skiz. So they're also not going to get a payment system because yeah, they're using different currency, right? We need to install payment systems that can handle the sand and split up the sand 50-50. And over here is uh, Oak and Birch, uh, which will be Joe's area. And I will also just build the shell kind of then maybe build here an exemplary room in those licenses I fully own, like this one and that one here. And then maybe he could take some inspiration, but I want to give uh, Joe, quote unquote, creative freedom to do his own thing. And, you know, with Joe, it's always uh, <laughs> some surprises. So we will see what we do, do here. But uh, Joe will also need one of our payment systems. That's for sure. And then... Yeah, we will have all the five licenses here with the two wood uh, types combined and, you know, the license can be hung up then in the individual areas and I think it should turn out great. We will have to raise the ceiling here a little bit, but it's no problem. It's a double floor here already prepared uh, for eventual uh, stuff that needs to go up in here. And then here is our sand pile. But yeah, we'll raise the floor probably up, uh, ceiling up to here partially for this area here. But we don't have to do the whole whole place. It's good to have a lot of space around here for uh, future redstone stuff potentially. I mean the dream would be with this shop that I managed to produce this all in one location, you know, all the log types and things that are needed here and then um, I would somehow automatically ship that all to the place here and don't have to come visit and uh, do anything manually here in the shop. That would be the end goal dream of this thing here. And yeah, of course here two chests um, I want to sell loose uh, logs right individual stacks and probably shulker boxes full of and uh, obviously the bulk deals will be cheaper then um, at the moment as I said the price should be about four sand per uh, stacks per log stack and then probably for bulk somebody buys sh shulker boxes maybe we do three three-ish <laughs> what is this guy doing he's like he's looking like some nosy tourist man <laughs> yeah he's looking for log i think people want logs yeah we need to yeah that's why i'm working hard on this here <laughs> he's like some drunk tourist man living over there in his holiday resort man <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know, people are wanting to get into the woods. He already looked, I think he looked for jungle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man, we need to get everything going. So much to do. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think for now I did enough building. I'm sick of building. I want to do redstone now. And um, yeah, what better to do than build a payment system. And finally, here I prepared my redstone chest for all of that. We will build three of these payments and combined splitter systems. And here they are, the beautiful deep lit diamond. Or finally, we're doing premium redstone again. So yeah, let me start working here a little bit. I think we will build that, that one here at Joe's first. And then um, we have a look how this all works. All right, I think I got the first payment and splitter system installed. And yeah, it's fairly compact. And um, yeah, I want to keep it simple, right? People come in here. In here we will have an item with the price telling exactly how much uh, it will be. Probably will be a bit of uh, <laughs> sand. <laughs> and then people be like, okay, blah, 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 this and this. I have to pay this and that amount. And then they just go there and pay. And it's simple math as it's increments of four, right? People should be able to do it. Okay, grab two stacks, costs me eight sand. And then they just go here 
and then throw their sand in. Like here, Polish Tuff is representing our sand, sand only, it says up here. I will have a sign explaining a little bit, but all you have to do is put your payment in and then confirm payment. That's it. A new empty Schalke box gets placed here to receive the next payment. Oh, yeah, I need to. <laughs> replace my scaffolding here to get in and out and yeah you can see the system down there is running at the moment and um, then yeah Schalke box is getting recycled we will run it again I don't worry there's a lot of stuff that just happened now in this short amount of time but um, yeah we threw in that uh, stack of payment and look at that 21 here 21 there we perfectly split um, yeah, the payment. And um, yeah, then it's going to be simple, right? There's going to be a chest array below here. The barrels are just uh, for the time being because I expect um, bigger amounts than this coming in. And then a few chests stacked on top of each other. One side will say, say Joe, one side it will say Goat. And that's how we're going to manage our payments here. And uh, it's going to be automatically split it. And that's, of course, very convenient. As you all know, I don't like to do anything. And if you can automate everything here, then probably later at a Schalke uh, box packing station, you know, and then we just chip off um, all the profits via mail. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, uh, that makes me really happy already to think about it, how less work this will be. <laughs> okay. But yeah, let's look at the system here again. Obviously, there's more going on than the splitting below. But yeah, we can look at the splitter. It's um, one that will remember, um, even if you throw in uneven counts and so on. So that's really important, right? So we don't lose track of whatever is going on. And uh, it simply checks here if there's items coming in. A clock activates and it sends this observer back and forth locking these uh, hoppers that sit under this chest alternating right here's a uh, double chest and this means um, one time this side will pull out and one time the other side and it just flicks back and back and forth back and forth until the complete inventory is processed on top here we have a Schalke box payment uh, refill system pretty much so what happens is we have a Schalke box up there and if you put a payment in, we can do that. So let's throw this time, I don't know, 50 green dye in there as a payment. And I'm not going to do an item filter here. If people uh, throw diamonds in, I'll take them too. <laughs> but hopefully they remember sand. And then, you know, you just press here. First thing that obviously has happened, this gets replaced. Secondly, the one we just got gets put onto this uh, Schalke box unloading station. And that's the Schalke box we put the green dye in and gets completely unloaded and uh, you know funneled down into the splitter as you can see the splitter is going wild down there splitting things and yeah when the Schalke box is empty it gets broken and put back into the system and is sitting in here waiting to be sent up back into the system oh I've got a scaffolding here from from building yeah and um, this is kind of how whole rotation here works and that's uh, pretty much it and the next Schalke box uh, will be coming in um, we sent those upwards and yeah now I need to install a few more um, two more um, and the two shops we operate pretty much Sometimes, no, nah, that's, that's wrong in my case. Always, I do a lot. <laughs> so, you know, I just uh, enjoy playing Minecraft. What can I say, man? It's just the greatest uh, game and uh, way of expressing your, your art ever created. I mean, no doubt. Okay, music and, you know, actual drawing skills comes close. But, man, I just love this game. And sometimes... It's the most enjoyable thing to watch weirdest uh, documentaries on Netflix and just keep on building and flowing. You know, I watched, <laughs> I watched Physical 100. 
it's a show on Netflix about uh, uh, from, produced in Korea, so it has the special Korean vibe to it. You know, everything a bit dramatic and over the top, <laughs> really cool. And uh, it's this weird battle of athletes uh, in Korea, and yeah, it's <laughs> the way it's almost a battle of superheroes. Oh, look at his size. It's the biggest size I've ever seen. You might pull this ship like a elephant. And then, you know, oh, it's Zhong He. No, it's Keralis. Hey, man. What's crack a -lacking? Hey, dude. Uh, just a question. Just a quick question. Yeah. May I borrow some glass bottles from you? Glass bottles? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I might not have the license for that. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you All can. All right. There's a <laughs> okay. you know, swamp thing, you know the way. Right? Yeah, there's a swamp thing. I'm just going to take like a half sugar, max. Just yeah, no some worries. honey bottles. You know, Thank you. No Thank worries. you so much, Doc. You're the bee guy. I know your, your pain. It's a pain. It's a very big pain. <laughs> Later. I love your face. Thank you, you look so happy, much, Doc. Though. Bye. <laughs> I am super happy. I've just made my first sales. <laughs> three diamonds, man. I've made three diamonds. Wow. Three Yeah, no, this, this, it's terrible. This is going to be my only seed for the season. Come here, yeah. Alice. Here, <laughs> check up? check this up? out. Somebody might have needed a decorative beehive, all right? Uh-huh. Mm? Did, did, did you purchase that? Maybe. I don't remember, actually. It was delirious. It took too long to build this. It mi I might have also chopped it away from a tree somewhere, but I could have bought it. I spent some money somewhere. I forgot though. Uh, yeah, I haven't checked those. Maybe, maybe, well, it all mine comes with free bees, and I don't see any bees around unless you kill the bees, nah, which would be yeah. terrible. Nah, I would be I so I, so upset. I chopped it somewhere. Uh -huh. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> next time. <laughs> <laughs> next time. Can't make money on anything anymore. Uh, yeah, I know. I know. <sighs> If you don't sell Schalke boxes, or supposedly the biggest seller is like hay bales. <laughs> Why hay bales? Because everybody's obsessed oh, mud. with mud. Mudding. Man. Yeah. It's like a whole economy ah. is involved in like somebody is running the mud shop, probably bought out all the hay bales. It's like, you know, it's going to lead to crazy inflation. That's for sure. If everybody's just buying from each other <laughs> to yeah, making no, their it's things, good. like, is nobody making farms anymore? It's like. <sighs> Buy some candles, Doc. Yeah. Buy some candles. Candles would look amazing Candles. in this place. Instead of, <laughs> I thought you were suggesting of... I should just become a farmer and leave this life behind. <laughs> <laughs> I might do that. Candles, not cattle. Oh, all right, all right. All right. I'm out of here. Thank you so much, Doc. Later. Later. Um, anyways, what? What were we talking about? Oh, yeah, Physical 100. Uh, I can only recommend. It's pretty, pretty epic. What is also epic is, and I want to hear you applaud uh, me in the chat for this amazing shop. Come on, huh? You come in here and you feel like home. You feel like in the dreamland of wood and sand. All right. So let's let's take it all in, guys. Let's take let's take the whole experience in, right? So first you'll be like, whoa, that's ominous. Wait, there's a silly fish in there. Oh, that sign looks homely and carpentry. Let's explore. And then you come in and from ominous to Oh, just need some bees flying around in here, man, for real. Look at that, the atmosphere. And here we go. Here we have all our shops. This is Joe's shop. He was already here and he was really, really happy. He said, oh, man, I can't wait. I start this right on the weekend. He wants to do his own design, of course, in here. And he immediately hung up his license up there, which made me really happy. You know, I have everything standardized for the payment. Here, press button to confirm, using an armor stand here to create this here, pay with sand, sand only, hopefully that's enough for Hermes to understand what the heck's going on here. <laughs> so, you know, this is the area and here's always the idea, right, symbolizing the wood types that are sold um, with the respective tree models and, you know, some small details all over the place. I have these flower pots and things representing trees are being grown. Here's a little bit of a bigger sapling. It grew already. Different stems, trying to keep it, um, you know, have a ver variety of, of little, yeah, small saplings and stuff going on. And yeah, here some, some log chopping represent, you know, some wood chopper on a proper, uh, you know, axe hammered into the log. Always a good bit. 
dabbed a little bit into armor stand magic. Obviously, you know, Cleo is the lord of armor stand magic. But I took the simple, simple poses here as well, right? You know, stargazing, praising the almighty sand, kind of focusing up there where more sand will be. Uh, this guy back there too. Yeah, Green had to kill me twice uh, so I could get those heads. And then, you know, we transition over here into the area of skiz and beef. Uh, same flavor here, right? We have the two wood types represented. And for them, I just left this empty room. I already told uh, beef is already stoked uh, about moving in too, which is good, you know. We have good vibes here in the in the big wood shop. Um, so far, so good. Uh, things are happening. Yeah, and you know, they can do their own thing and obviously they're not connected to our centralized payment system for sand. So I didn't hook them up with it. But maybe later down the line, they, they see the light and eventually will sing, sell things for sand. Here we got beef, lower grade, netherwood. He's got the diagonal room. It might be a bit, little bit more tricky to make this look nice later. Uh, but, uh, you know, the, the trade-off is when you come in, poof, it's right on the focus, right? It's right there. So I think... Um, should be happy with this place too. In the corners, try to out de detail myself as much as possible, having small interesting corners and bits. And of course, we also made sure to have the accompanying flora to the treeness, right? Obviously here we got the paddles and here I try to have a little bit of a swamp thingy. Here, well, what to do with birch, I guess the, the um, honey or beehive. And then here, just try to have it a little bit interesting. Right, there's oak is oak is oak. <laughs> what you gonna do about it? Here the respective fl flora, and here of course, acacia with our license hung up there already. And yeah, here you can see an exemplary shop. Um, I installed a really nice ceiling here, in my opinion, um, as well. And it gives you a little overview of all the cool stuff you can make from our amazing wood here. And those are the chests that will be hooked up to a behind-the-scenes refilling system. I haven't installed that yet, kind of basement and behind-the-scenes section. I guess I will have a secret door or something somewhere here in the middle. Joe will get a key for that too, so he can access that. And then poof, we can go in, you know, refill our sand and manage all the stuff behind the scenes a little bit and access the payment systems and all that. But yeah, I think that turns out really great, right? All the bits and pieces you can make from these wood types kind of laid out here, stripped and all the signs. And I will also use these signs to have some dis uh, description here, right? Um, we're planning to sell bulk and individual items, so that will be noted down here on the signs. And yeah, here, same payment system, press to confirm. Maybe it needs a little bit additional uh, signage or so. And yeah, last but not least, over here, of course, we got the jungle and the dark oak license hung up there as well. And the same layout for this room here. And yes, yeah, just an idea um, how you could do this. I'm expecting Joe to do something completely different. But I told him if he wants to look for a base, a rough idea, he can definitely, you know, see if he can find some inspiration here. But I just like the idea to have the clear separation of the two wood types. I really opted for the five rooms uh, instead of 10 individual ones. And I think, um, yeah, that works out really well with the idea of the licenses or permits also always covering two, right? Two of the wood types. And then, uh, you know, obviously the skylight up here, which gives an epic view uh, up to the fish. I need to definitely patch out this wood bit here, though, and maybe put some glass there or so that's... That disturbs my aesthetic here a little bit. Looks a bit cheap in comparison to everything else. And eventually, I mean, maybe this skylight will also be covered with sand. I mean, here's the sand pile. We started already. Maybe I'll try to avoid it for a while and kind of stack around it also so we can keep this epic view up as long as possible. But uh, hopefully, eventually, this will all be covered with sand, the lighting in here was conceptualized with that in mind that, that uh, you know, no skylight comes in. It's really fun, fun project, hanging out with my friends uh, Lumen and um, Jerome was working on that again. But I have to say, like the thing we made in creative as a basic idea and how it turned out now in survival is still quite different. <laughs> quite different here, it has way more detail, it got carried away a bit. But I just felt felt this build and wanted to make it really, really 
really good and i think it has a really cool vibe i even has some flowering azelia hidden somewhere in the ceiling to give this you know the particle effect in here um i, I think that really then tied it all together that was the kind of the missing link and when i finally found one and put it in then i was like yeah now now i'm feeling this but i think yeah we did a good job here nice and bright and cozy warm inspires you to spend all your sand <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, now I am left with this mess here of a random assortment of insane chests from all the... Like, it needed so many different blocks. Man, we need some better way of inventory management. I say it every time. As soon as you become a little bit ambitious with your builds and want to work on some detailed stuff, the inventory management is the greatest hindrance of creativity. Like, no doubt. So annoying. So annoying. <laughs> there needs to be a better way, man. There needs to be a better way. It's back and forth and back and forth. It almost drove me crazy. This is what breaks me. I would do even more details. and But the inventory management is just what holds you back to do anything in some sort of reasonable time frame anymore. It's like, you could do way more. But yeah, at some point you just have to say, okay, I'm, I'm going to work with 80 different blocks, types and items, and uh, not 200. It's... Uh, at some point, inventory management becomes too much. So yeah, with that said, I hope you uh, like this build, but I'm very pleased with it. I think it's um, definitely uh, fitting with the level um, yeah, we put up, with, you know, with this mega build. Um, if it's just an empty shell, it's worth nothing in my book. It's got to be alive and it's got to be real and you got to put some effort in and then you end up with something you can be proud about. And I am definitely am... Um, proud about the work that was put in creating this whole whole thing and we are not fully done yet now the fun part starts with coming up with cool farm designs to stock this thing maybe a fully automatic delivery system I have a cool concept in mind for that too where we could literally bridge unloaded chunk areas and uh, uh, deliver items to any spot on the server um, that would be really cool but we'll see we'll see no there's always something uh, a million plans and yeah, there's something though, even I will not bother with. And uh, that's uh, yeah, what the comment of the, the day is about. <laughs> uh, Green's desire to avoid administrative work is about to meet its greatest challenge. A petty German. Hey, I'm not German. <laughs> I'm not petty. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Crab, I tell you guys, I will not deal with this insa insanity. I watched Scar's episode, man. Nobody puts me in a five-minute waiting loop just to file in some complaints. I don't care. We will. Uh, we are in full compliance with our shop. We are pretty much the only collective that managed manage to get every everybody under one roof yet. And um, I think we have nothing to fear from any paperwork, but we will we'll also not file any complaints, man. Let somebody else do that. Um, maybe uh, Cleo can out petty me. <laughs> yeah, I, I killed the villagers. Um, if you haven't seen her stream, um, I just installed a detection whenever you trade with them. Instantly, they will be killed by instant damage to potions. And uh, yeah, redemption was sweet. But hey, I knew... Right, that cup had some villages for ready for her, and yeah, with the infrastructure we have right now, with the emeralds and everything, I knew it would be, you know, a breeze to restock. And indeed, she's got all the villages back already, uh, but she learned a lot with it, so I'm happy. <laughs> with that said, I see you guys next week in the video. And if you want, uh, there's the Hermitcraft stream weekend coming up. Um, probably right now while you're watching so check it out i'll be live too and um, yeah see you next time twitch links and so on read the description like subscribe youtube stuff you know the drill <laughs> bye guys